the myth of explosive weightlifting. In today's video, I'm going to teach you the reasons why lifting weights explosively provides no additional benefit to doing slower, more controlled, and safer repetitions. Not only do I personally see it in the gym, sloppy, awful form of people jerking the weight and lifting explosively, but this is actually taught to athletes as a superior training method to make the athlete more powerful and perform better in their sport. But the thing is, not only is there zero evidence to support that lifting weights explosively provides better strength improvement, better muscle growth, or better sports performance, there's actually a huge amount of research that shows the opposite of that. Now keep in mind, there are some sports which require you to lift the weight explosively. Powerlifting and Olympic lifting. So everything I'm about to say does not apply to that because it's a very specific skill used in very specific competition. So let's talk about the first myth. Now there's actually a study that went over all of the literature regarding explosive lifting, plyometrics, and all that other silly nonsense that athletic coaches like to teach their athletes. The paper is titled, Explosive Exercise in Sports Training. A critical review. It was conducted and written by Stuart Bruslow and Dave Smith and published in the official research journal of the American Society of Exercise Physiologists. Here's a quick review of the abstract and what the paper actually shows when it comes to lifting explosively. Contrary to popular belief and the practices of many athletes, the peer-reviewed evidence does not support the view that such exercises are more effective than traditional slow and heavy training in enhancing muscle power and athletic performance. In fact, such exercises do not appear to be any more effective in this regard than weight training at a relatively slow cadence. And some evidence suggests they are less so. Also, and here's the biggest part that a lot of athletes don't really understand, but if you are an athlete, or even if you're a novice trainee, this is something everybody has to know. Quote, such explosive exercises do not transfer well, if at all, to athletic performance on the sports field and present a significant injury risk. So after going through all of the available literature, this paper was published in 2007, and this was when this stuff really started to get very, very popular. I remember when I was playing high school football, I used to do kettlebell swings. And when I was young, I used to do these exercises because I didn't know any better. Now, why is this? And let me explain something. It comes down to something called the law of specificity. This law states that in order for a skill to transfer to another activity, the skill must be practiced specifically how it will be used in that activity. For instance, you see this a lot in the gym. People get on a cable machine and they try to mimic or imitate a golf swing or a baseball swing or even throwing something, thinking that that is going to transfer to their power. But the thing is there is completely different mechanics involved in doing that exercise on a cable machine, even though it kind of looks like the activity you would do out in your sport and does not transfer to the sport at all. So people really, really, really need to understand the concept of skill transfer. For instance, if I want to improve my golf drive, I don't need to lift explosively or do an exercise that kind of looks like a golf swing. I need to make my muscles as strong as possible, which can be done very safe controlled exercises and then I go to the golf course and I practice my golf swing there and then you combine the two factors of this and now you've got a further golf drive so when it comes down to sports explosive lifting no benefit stupid don't do it now what about muscle growth and just improvements in strength well the paper also found that lifting more explosively does not enhance muscle hypertrophy at all compared to more controlled, traditional, safe repetitions. There seems to be this belief, and I've seen Mike Isretel talk about it on his channel, you know, fake PhD, Mike Isretel, yeah, that guy. And he proposed that you want to explode on the eccentric and control the negative. And the reason he says this is he says, well, there's more tension 
created when you explode on the positive, which physiologically is actually true. Shortening speed does affect the amount of mechanical tension on the muscle cell, but the increase in mechanical tension is so small that it is not going to contribute or make any difference in your overall muscle growth compared to if you just controlled the lifting phase. And it's not worth that additional external force production on your tendons and other connective tissues, which over time will beat them up and will lead to an injury if you continue doing it for a long period of time. So the thing is, people like Mike Gizertel, they read something, they understand the theory, but nobody ever takes the time to look at it from a practical perspective. And I think there should be a study done comparing somebody lifting explosively to failure, somebody using more controlled repetitions to failure, and see the difference in muscle growth at the end of the study. And I would guarantee you, I would bet my house that there'd be no difference in muscle growth, but a huge increase injury risk for the explosive lifters. If you want to dial in your training more and level up your gains and learn more in-depth information about exercise principles and what really works in the gym and learn how to maximize your physique potential with just two workouts a week, join my school group for free. I post a video every single day going over stuff like this to help equip you guys with knowledge so that way you don't end up relying on bozos like Mike Isretel to teach you things that are unsafe and don't work. So click the link below, you'll become your own expert. So that's it guys, if you wanna read that study yourself, I'm gonna put a link to the study in the description. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell notification icon so you'll be notified when I teach you more science-based exercise principles to get you in the best shape of your life while protecting your body in the process while saving time and saving your joints in the process. I'll see you next time.